Okay. Good morning, everyone. So this lecture is all about the flip flops. So as we all know, flip flop is the basic basic element for storing something. Okay. So it is a basic memory element. So there are four types of flip flop: SR, JK, D, and T. So we will start with the SR flip flop. So SR, as its name indicates, S for set and R for reset. So this flip flop is also known as set and reset flip flop. So in this one, in this one, I have shown this flip flop with the help of the NAND gate. As you can see here, there are four NAND gates: one, two, three, four. And if you can see, I have marked this. As a SR ledge, you all know about the SR ledge. So, if we are giving a clock input to a SR ledge, this is known as the SR flip flop. So, this flip flop will only work when the clock pulse is high. That means if the clock pulse is low, it will not work. If the clock pulse is one, then and only then, then this SR flip flop is going to work. Okay. So the two inputs are S and R. S for set, R for reset, and this is the clock input which should be high for its operation. Okay, and now as you can see here, the outputs Q N and Q N bar. So we all know Q N and Q N bar are the complementary outputs. They are complement to each other. The thing is, I have written here Q N plus one and Q N plus one bar. So As I have written here, Q N is the present output. That means these are the outputs. Basically, these are the assumed outputs, or these are the outputs which we have got from some inputs applied on S and R. Okay. Now, and Q N plus one will be the next output. Next output means the output which we are getting from the assumed Q N. Okay. Now I will show you in my next slide what is the significance of Q N plus one and Q N plus one bar. So uh, for each flip flop, for all the flip flops, we are going to do the characteristic table and the truth table. So this is the characteristic table of the S R flip flop. As you can see here, I have taken the three inputs Q N, S, R. And Q N plus one. So what is Q N? Q N is basically the present or the previous output, as you can see here. And Q N plus one will be the next output. Okay. So Q N can be zero and Q N can be one. We don't know what is Q N. It can be zero. It can be one. So we have taken all the probabilities here. If there are three inputs, that means you all know. If there are three inputs, that means how many combinations are possible? Eight combinations. So we have taken eight combinations here, and then how to get this? Okay. So this is very important. This is basically the working of the S and R flip flop. So as you can see, there are four cases: case one, case two, case three, and case four. Case one when S equals to zero and R equals to one. So basically, we are we are doing this characteristic table using these four cases. So as you can see, S equals to zero, R equals to zero. This is the first case, and you can see S equals to zero and R equals to zero. So this is the first case, and you can see Q N here is zero and Q N here is. One. So we will depict the output from these both states. Okay. So now, when s equals to zero, r equals to zero, that means the input set is zero, r equals to zero, and we all know clock pulse must be high. That means clock must be one. So for this NAND gate, what are the two inputs? It is zero and one, and this is the NAND gate. So as you can see, the NAND gate truth table. I have written the NAND gate truth table for your under, for your better understanding here. As you can see, there are four combinations. So if any of the input is zero, that means the output of NAND gate is one. If both the input are one, the output of NAND gate is zero. So you can see here, 
if any of the input that means this is zero that means the output is going to be one this is zero that means the output is going to be one now this qn is going here and this qn bar is feedback here okay so for this nand gate what are the inputs the inputs are one and qn bar okay so we have to predict qn plus one okay this is the qn that means this qn can be zero this qn can be one we don't know what is this qn okay and we are we are finding qn plus one here so as you can see qn plus one what will be the qn plus one this is the multiplication of these two inputs with a bar because this is a nine gate so as you can see here it will be one into qn bar whole bar so one into anything will be that thing so it will be qn so it will be qn bar double bar so if there is a double bar that means they will cancel each other so the output is qn same we can depict the qn plus one bar okay that means what is the next output the next output is the assumed output you understand this thing so we can complete this truth table here this is the assumed qn qn equals to zero here so what is qn plus one it is zero okay and here the qn is one so what will be qn plus one it is one so basically what we have assumed the output we are getting the assumed output okay now the next case when s equals to zero and r equals to one as you can see here s equals to zero and r equals to one and here also s equals to zero and r equals to one okay now again the same sr lash diagram s equals to zero r equals to one clock pulse is one now if any of the input is zero the output is one if both of the inputs are one what is the output it is zero so the output here we are getting zero and we all know this qn is feedback here and this qn bar is feedback here so what will be the output here qn plus 1 what will be the output the output will be 1 into qn bar whole bar that means the output is qn okay so we are not getting any value basically we have to find a value to get the answer so we will find the qn plus 1 bar here so what is qn plus 1 bar it will be 0 into qn so it will be 0 into qn whole bar so if we are multiplying 0 to any of the input the output will be 0 so 0 bar will be 1 so basically i am getting a value here so we will stop here and obviously these both outputs are complement to each other so if we are getting 1 here that means we are getting 0 here understand this thing that means the next state is zero we have got the value zero means the sr flip flop is in the reset state okay so as you can see in the characteristic table whether the assumed output is zero or one it does not matter because we we got the value here that the output will be zero so the output is zero here and the output is zero here okay now the third case the third case is when s equals to 1 and r equals to 0 so here you can see s equals to 1 and r equals to 0 and here also s equals to 1 and r equals to 0 now again we will apply the inputs to the to the nand uh, nand gate sr we can see clock is always high so both the inputs are one so the output will be zero both the inputs are one the output is output must be zero here i have written it wrong here the output is zero sorry sorry this is 
this is s equals to 1 and r equals to 0 so basically this is 0 i have i have written it wrong so please do the correction this is 0 here so this is 1 and 1 the output is 0 and this is 1 and 0 the output is 1 okay so now what will be q n plus 1 so what is q n plus 1 q n plus 1 equals to 0 into q n bar whole bar so the output I am getting is 1. So basically I am getting a value. So, so if I am getting a value here, that means the complementary output will be 0. That means that flip-flop is in set state. Okay. 1 means set state. It does not matter what we have assumed the Qn. The output is always be 1. So as you can see, this is 1 here. This is 1 here. Okay. Now the last case when s equals to 1 and r equals to 1. When s equals to 1 and r equals to 1. Now this is a very interesting case. As you can see here 1 and 1 and the clock pulse is 1 and 1. Okay. So if both the inputs are 1 the output is 0. If both the inputs are 1 the output is 0. So as you can see because these both transistors, these both gates are identical. That means there will be a race between the two transistors. Is it clear to you? So basically, if we are finding QN plus 1, QN plus 1, that means it is a multiplication of 0 into QN bar, 0 into QN bar, whole bar. That means we are getting 1. And the same thing, the same output we will be getting here, it will be 1. Basically, this is a indeterminate state. This is an invalid state, not valid state. So to modify this state, we use the JK flip-flop. We will discuss it later. So as you can see, I have written here invalid state and invalid state. This is the main drawback of this SR flip-flop. So basically, I think now you understand the working of the SR flip-flop from the this explanation and how to make the characteristic table from the SR flip-flop. Now in the next slide I will show you how to make a truth table from the characteristic table. Okay so this is the characteristic table we have already obtained from the working of the SR, SR flip-flop. Now this is the truth table. In the truth table we will see the two inputs are set and reset. So if there are two inputs, you better know how many combinations will be there. 2 raised to the power 2 equals to 4 combinations. So it will be 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1. And the outputs will be the next output now. I am not showing the QN in the truth table because QN can be 0, QN can be 1. These are the previous output or you can see the assumed output. Okay. So now I am just talking about the next state output. So it is the QN plus 1 and QN plus 1 bar here. Okay, so if S equals to 0, R equals to 0, you can see what will be the output. The output was the assumed QN. So that's why I have written here QN and the next state, this QN plus 1 will be the QN bar. Is it clear to you? Now, the S, when S equals to 0 and R equals to 1, you can see the output is 0 here. And the output is 0 here. So it does not matter what is the QN. In both of the cases, I have get the output 0. So I have written here 0. And obviously, the complementary will be 1. So that means it is the reset state. And this is the no change state. That means the output is the same as the previous output. Okay. Now the next is when S equals to 1 and R equals to 0. So in both of the cases, I am getting 1 here and I am getting 1 here. Okay. So you can see when S equals to 1, R equals to 0, in both of the cases, we are getting 1. So the output is 1 here and the complementary output will be 0. So in this case, the, the flip-flop is in the set state. Okay. And the last case, 1 and 1. 1 and 1. It is the indeterminate or the invalid state. So we don't know what will be the output. So that's why I have 
I have shown it with the help of a cross. Okay, and this is known as the invalid state. So this is all about the working of the SR flip flop. In the next in the next presentation, I will show you the working of the JK flip flop. Thank you so much. I'll keep you posted. Thank you. Bye.